Chapter 1 She Cashed the Check Chapter 2 The vodka burned the back of Aaron's throat. It spilled from the corners of her mouth as she gulped from the upturned bottle. She greedily tried to keep up with the steady flow of alcohol as it escaped. It trailed down her neck across a diamond choker and pooled between her breasts. The evening gown she wore was soaked. Its tight material strangled her body. The white mink coat stifled her movement. Aaron sat behind the wheel of a Verneo Lamborghini. The roadster shattered the quiet night with its V12 engine and spinning tires trimmed in red. The cockpit of the sports car glowed yellow from the lighting behind the navigational display screen. The Veneo clocked its speed in kilometers while its audio system decimated the winter night with Indian music. The foreign lyrics and strange beat created a remix of Bollywood rap and urban hip hop. The Hindi rhymes and street stanzas fused together smoothly and spewed out a tale of addictive love. Aaron turned the volume up even louder. The blaring music made her think of Marari. It allowed her to believe for a moment that he was still in her life, that he hadn't left. Of course, the hard liquor also aided to that belief. It eased the pain of knowing. It stalled the reality of things. Aaron felt happy, medicated. In her mind, she had just completed a 19-hour stint on the obstetrics gynecology floor of Penn's Landing Memorial Hospital. This would have been the time in her residential rotation through the different medical fields that Aaron had seriously considered OBGYN as a specialty. She couldn't wait to get to her apartment to tell Marari about her solo cesarean section. The emergency C-section procedure had resulted in the premature delivery of twins, baby girl A and baby girl B. Both were underweight, but viable, thriving. The tiny sisters had been rushed to the intensive care nursery and their miniature faces were placed under oxygen tents in order to alleviate the excessive strain on their underdeveloped lungs. The birth had actually happened years ago on the eve of Thanksgiving Day holiday, but in Aaron's alcoholic state, she believed it had occurred tonight. The Verneo hugged the corners of Broad and Snyder. It whipped around the curve like a hot car on a racetrack, unencumbered by the parked cars which lined the middle divide of a street rich in Italian-American history. This part of the city was home to the Philadelphia Mummers, a marching dancing brigade of men who dressed in stunning feathers and glittered sequin costumes. Some men rode on theme-oriented floats modeled after popular movies, children's fairy tales, and fantasies, while others played string instruments as they paraded down Center City, the streets of Philadelphia, during the New Year's Day parade. Thousands of families gathered in the January cold to watch the marching mummers, but Erin Simpkin was not one of them. She was usually covering at the hospital while some attending surgeon spent the holiday celebrating with his family and friends. The Verneo Lamborghini tore down the streets and revved past closed pizza shops, hoagie joints, and beer distributors. Aaron drove recklessly. She ran through red, yellow, and green traffic lights. She soared through intersections, scraped parked cars, sideswiped mirrors. To her, none of them existed. She used both lanes of the street, unaware of a double white line making its divide. The night was late and most people were off the road. A startled driver honked his horn incessantly as she whizzed by him. Aaron heard only the blaring of the music. Then she hit something, and everything changed. The front of the car lifted. The Italian trade name and bull symbol glittered in the moonlight from the elevated hood of the luxury vehicle as the steering wheel slipped from under her control. 
The Reneo jumped a cemented curb and crossed a pavement. It tore through tall bushes and shrubbery. The alcoholic-induced images fled Aaron's mind as she dropped the vodka bottle and a revelation hit her. She was going to die. Aaron smashed down on the brakes. The car locked in position. It stopped. Aaron heard an explosion. She felt a soft white cloud of fabric erupt in front of her. It cushioned her movement. The young surgeon's body jerked forward, but the seat belt restrained her. The motion soon reversed directions, and Aaron felt herself being slammed back against the driver's seat. The accident was brief, seemed minor. It took no more than a few seconds. The damage was unclear. The airbag dissolved, and the powder residue of the explosion dissipated. The elegantly dressed woman released herself from the car harness with trembling hands. She wasn't hurt. The sobering thought caused her to reach for the vodka bottle, which had fallen to the floor. She lifted it to her mouth. A few more drops remained. Aaron fumbled with the mechanism that elevated the driver's door. She also activated the passenger side. She needed cold air. She was burning up. Aaron stumbled from the sports car. She felt the vodka bubbling in her stomach. She bent slightly when her stomach contracted and she sensed the vomit racing past her throat. Aaron's body pitched forward as she released the contents of her stomach. The wrenching of her abdominal muscles refused to stop until she heaved up everything. Aaron's aim was impressive. Somehow, she had avoided making contact with the disgusting bile. She looked around and saw a house in the distance. She staggered toward it, but her feet tripped over something in the dark. Aaron clutched the bottle as she fell to the ground. She suddenly felt the cold wind cutting through her wet gown. She pulled the enormously full coat around her body with one hand. It gave her warmth. She decided to remain where she was, to rest for a moment. She raised the bottle in her hand to her lips again, forgetting that it was empty. Thoughts of Marari came to her in the yard. That was the only place she could think of resting her head. She thought of him. Then she saw the headlights of her car. They seemed to spotlight the missed catastrophe. The blaring beams revealed all the things she had not hit. But Aaron was aware of nothing. Her mind was focused on a charismatic Indian prince, on his lovemaking, on his hard, brutal kisses, on his demanding sexual appetite. The images seduced her, lured her into a wild and passionate dream.